from Advil. Believe my pain. True stories of pain bias. And this has gone hugely viral. I've seen some photos floating around Instagram, but this is directly from the company's YouTube account. And as of this recording, it only has like 950 views and the comments have been turned off. So it doesn't seem like it's really working for them, but they don't care. And of course, I mean, they don't. They already have enough money. Money's not the bottom line at this particular point in time, right? Is to push the agenda. To truly relieve pain, we need to put an end to systemic pain bias. And oh, systemic pain. To truly relieve pain, we need to put an end to systemic pain bias. So we obviously, well, from the title alone, we know where they stand. But why are they doing this? You can't talk about the system and then go to bat for Bo Jiden, who quite literally helped to build that system and has been in politics since before, you know, most people watching YouTube today were even born. And to believe black people when they say they're in pain. This is crazy. This is their new ad campaign. I mean, how, how did this, who, who thought, okay, let me calm down. You could, this is just as bad as the Bo Jiden administration trotting out Rachel Levine, assistant health secretary, doctor, lawyer, nurse, or whatever they, them, Z, Zims are, is an um, old man, a 60 year old man in a women's army outfit to tell you that the air is racist. That got through several layers of approval, which means I mean, maybe there is a chance, there is a slim chance that these people are really stupid, but it's far more likely that it's completely evil. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, you kind of have to respect the commitment because they know exactly what they're doing and they're losing, so they're going even crazier. But now, Advil is trying to sell you pills by telling you that pain is racist. What we're all here to talk about is something that we have in common, which is not being. And look, OK, sh shout out to them because they clearly know what's what's hip. Now they're trying to do like a podcast scene. They're trying to do like a, a funny Marco Bobby Altoff. I mean, obviously, it's not comedy, but they know that they need to get with the times and they can't have like an old commercial of a, a guy with the lightning and fire shooting out of his back to sell pills. So they got to shoot it up, set it up like a podcast. And this is the host, Elaine Welroth, Wel Welteroth, host and advocate for pain equity. These people will just make up anything to get paid, and I guess you can't blame them. Believed, not having our pain taken seriously, and each of you represent a much bigger medical phenomenon, frankly, that needs to be exposed and addressed and it's an issue around pain inequity. Just to characterize this issue of pain inequity, I just want to share a stat that I think will resonate with all of you. Um, this is crazy. She's about to drop some nonsense junk science. It's from an Advil study on pain equity, and it says this. Among black people suffering from pain, three in four said that they believe there is bias in how pain is diagnosed and treated. 74%. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I, this doesn't even make any sense. The three out of four black people said there was bias in how their pain was treated. I, I get what? So I share these stats to underscore that you are not. Alone. Those aren't stats. And I am quickly, you know, uh, vindicated <laughs> by saying she was about to drop some junk science. And she did exactly that. Alone in what you have experienced. And that's why we're here to, to validate your stories. So, Atisia, yes, you too have experienced your pain being dismissed within the medical system. Tell us your story. So at age 14, my pain is always dismissed. I want to get on that panel. I had already started experiencing excruciating menstrual cramps. I would go to the doctor and I would tell them all my symptoms and they would just be like, you know, it's just a period, you know, that's just... Well, it's okay. So this girl claims the doctor is racist because they said, oh, you're, you're, you're feeling pain? Oh, that's probably just your period, right? Like, so get some Advil? What? That's how it goes. You're just a woman. I guess, 
Wait, wait, it's, hang on, hang on, hang on. I guess so, right? Like, I don't know. I'm not a woman. I don't get cramps or period or anything. But sure, I mean, take some ibuprofen, right? Like, I think ibuprofen is is the active ingredient in Advil, which you could probably get for half the price. But I'm just not sure. I'll let it play. I'm not sure I understand her story is right now that the doctor told us, yeah, you're having a period. Literally every single woman has one. Well, almost every single woman has one. Also men. Men can too. Um, but that was racist. So I'm here to get some Advil. This is what women have to go through. You have to be strong because this is not going to end until, you know, you hit menopause. And it's just like, why are you trying to minimize what I'm experiencing by saying that this is what women go through? This is not what women have to go through. I moved down to Florida April 9th and 10 days later I was in emergency surgery. But when they went in there, they saw so much damage. And now I'm dealing with the consequences of the negligence that I've been facing all these years. They had to remove my left ovary. They had to remove my fallopian tube. And, you know, the damage was already done. So it's kind of like, was it on me because I wasn't going to the right doctors or... Wait, so you were perhaps misdiagnosed because you told them you had period symptoms. It was something else. And they didn't acknowledge it was something else immediately. So that's that's racial bias. All right, fair. Is it that you guys are not paying attention and you just don't care about the pain that I'm experiencing? Mm. And I really do feel like it was the latter. Mm. This is a case where you did everything right. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Mark, I'd love to hear you share a little bit of your story. I know you, uh, you went in. Yo, the production on this is crazy. It's like a Food Network show meets a race baiting infomercial to the er with chest pain it started one morning i woke up and i just i tried to breathe yo my god it, this this looks like charles barkley's more retarded nephew it just felt weird when i was trying to breathe so i finally went into the emergency room and their initial observation was they couldn't find out what was wrong with me so they sent me back home said just take some over-the-counter medicine went home i just kept getting worse and worse and worse so then I go to the emergency room. Okay, I, I'm noticing a little bit of a pattern here is that they're just finding people who may have been diagnosed and calling that diag that misdiagnosis racism. Seems like what's happening. Um, they couldn't find anything that was wrong with me. They sent me back home again and I got worse and worse. At this time, I just needed the help of anybody. And I just felt like I was being lost and left behind. I got to the point where I, it was the final day where I thought this was gonna be my last day on earth because my breathing was just terrible. And like I could feel- There you go, there you go. It's life and death. I thought I was gonna die, but I didn't. And now I'm telling you the story to sell pills. My heart slowing down. I had my, my son and his mom there went to another location because I didn't want him to get sick with whatever I had. So I called her and I said, I needed to speak to my son. And she said, why? I said, I just want to tell him goodbye one last time and that I love him. And I didn't know I was if I was going to get a chance to see him grow up any further. I wasn't going to be there to never. But you did. And now you're crying about it. What, what is happening, bro? Navigate through life, the different things that you may come in contact with, the conflicts and all that. And his mom said, no, we're coming to get you. And they, they rushed me to the hospital. They said, well, let's, let's check out his heart. Then they found that I did have fluid coming around my heart, and it was called pericarditis. And then you sent me to a cardiologist and I was telling him what I was feeling. And he kept saying, no, I don't, I don't think you're feeling that. It couldn't possibly be that. And I, I basically had to beg my doctor to do. Wait, wait, wait. He said, no, I don't think you're feeling that. Doubt it. Doubt it. Blood work, because that's how they found out that I had the inflammation in my heart the first time. This also, because everything in life reverts back to a Seinfeld episode, reminds me of when George pretends that his arm flinches and then he goes to the doctor and the doctor's like might i suggest you're just lying about the whole thing and george wasn't even black he was reluctant to do the blood work but i kept pushing and kept pushing like look please do the blood work he finally did it and it was at this point i'm like this whole time i think i'm going crazy but i know something is going wrong nobody's listening to what i'm telling you is going wrong and i just want you to hear that i'm telling you i know my body i know what i feel you can't tell me what i feel but something is wrong they just wouldn't listen to me and it was it was aggravating, thinking like, I'm, I don't want to leave this earth and not see my son again. I want to leave this earth. Good job, bro. Give this guy the big bag of money with the dollar sign on it. Knowing I have so much more I want to do, but that's, I thought I was going to be leaving this earth at that point. You, you said that you got to the point where you thought 
it was the end for you and you thought that, you know, you weren't going to survive it, but you did survive it. Yes. And you're here to tell your story. So many heads are nodding because we all have experienced some, some portion of that, I'm sure. Deirdre, I'd love to talk to you next. So your sixth pregnancy, mm -hmm. you are... Deirdre got six kids. All right. Shout out to that wig or weave or whatever she got going. Experiencing chest pain. When I went to the hospital, I gave a normal birth, right? Everything was fine. And then afterwards, I was like, I was having a lot of chest pain, like heaviness. I didn't know how to describe it. And I was Damn, This actually kind of sucks. Like she's going to have six kids that hopefully she's just acting and she just gets the bag or whatever and provides for her family. But... Cause she, if she truly believes that Advil is helping racism or whatever, is she gonna impart those crazy beliefs onto six children? I was telling the nurse, I said, I, I was like, I don't feel right. Like something feels very weird in my chest. She was like, Oh well, when you when you go home, everything will be okay. So when I went home, we was carrying stuff up the stairs, and I felt like a like a pressure in my chest, like something. I, I kid you not, it felt like something tore. My grandfather was like. I think we should go call another doctor. And they came and did an EKG. They was like, the EKG is abnormal. I was like, okay. So they did a, a ultrasound on my heart. They was like, well, you having a, a leaky valve and everything. So I was like, okay. My trump hormone levels was very high. And he was like, that means you're having a heart attack. I was like, I'm sitting here talking to you. There's no way I'm having a heart attack. I just left the hospital from having a baby. What happened was my artery tore and it flapped over, so stopped all the blood from properly flowing through. Wow. So it was, it was a very scary experience, obviously. So you had a heart attack? Yeah. I'm so sorry. As a mom... Okay, so she had a heart attack and that's racist? This story really resonates with me uh, a lot. All right, so Derek, let's go with you next. Uh, I'd love to hear your story. I've had migraines since I was, ooh, 10. And... My, my, my guy... For a long like... while, people believed men didn't get migraines. It got so bad. <laughs> Bro, okay. Uh, shout out to the OG, but he's, he's, he's like an old gay guy. I drove myself to the emergency room, and this doctor comes in, a little woman, and she looks at me. She says, oh, big men don't get migraines. You sure it's a migraine? And she's just arguing. With and I was offended by that. <laughs> with me that I don't have a migraine, and I threw up on her. Oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> a little nurse didn't believe your story. Apparently, I don't believe this story. But you're telling me that a little nurse didn't believe your story at the hospital, that you had a, a an excruciating migraine, so you threw up on her? All right, cool. Go buy Advil. They're flying around getting me the drugs and everything that I need to stop my migraine. We shouldn't have to fight that hard to be taken care of. It's both the, the skin color and the size you know, mm -hmm. you don't feel that. Yo, he got two victim cards. He's like, I'm black and I'm big. And they scared him. Dog, this is wild. Mm -hmm. They diminish what I'm going through. Right. So now I go to a medical, I, when I approach a medical professional, we're at war. <laughs> I'm coming. What? What are you talking about? You're at war with the medical professional because you claim she didn't believe that you had a migraine? What? That that escalated quickly. In knowing I got to fight you. Don't accept what they tell you. Follow your instincts and keep advocating for yourself. Hearing these. Yeah, yeah. I heard that about Rona, too. Remember back in the day when if you felt sick and you got you, you went and got a test, right? It was all about testing. Even so after the mask. But before the pharmaceutical was required, it was all about testing. Oh, go get a test. And there was quite literally a point where if you felt sick, but you tested negative, then the test was probably wrong. You should just go do it again. Right. So there was just no chance that you couldn't have it. Meanwhile, you know, papayas were testing positive. These stories arms us with tools and with uh, a different protocol, a different way to navigate oh them. So God. thank you for sharing that. And Naya, you were diagnosed with sickle cell? Yes, I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia at birth. So you have learned how to navigate life with sickle cell anemia, with chronic pain your whole life? Yes, we call it flare-ups. So around two years ago, I started experiencing one of my flare-ups. I went to the emergency room. Now, I guess they are correct in saying sickle cell anemia is racist, right? I think more black people 
get that. Or is it only black people get that? I don't know. I think that is a race specific disease. Not quite sure what that has to do with selling Advil. Maybe it's because, so I guess they're trying to get black people to buy Advil, which I believe is actually ibuprofen and could be purchased at the same store for half the price. So we're going to tell them that everything is racist. So they spend the money on Advil. That's it. And I told them all of my symptoms, you know, just like very upset and crying and, you know, because I was feeling so much pain. So the nurse called me in. She sees that I'm visibly in pain and she's like, okay, I'm going to, she's like, I'm going to try to get the doctor right away. You know, she was, she was very sympathetic. She asked me uh, of my pain level and I told her 10 out of 10. She was like, okay, okay. So what usually works for you? So she was like, okay, I'll go bring the doctor in and I'll tell him. So uh, upon coming in, he didn't even say, you know, greet himself. So you said your pain level was a 10 out of 10. How are you talking right now? He was trying to be petty with it. Like he wasn't being <laughs> sympathetic at all. He was like, if it was a 10 out of 10, you wouldn't be talking. So you really should say nine out of 10. And he was like, first of all, I just know that I'm not going to give you that amount. So that's, that's racist. That's that fairly decent point, whatever, perhaps debatable is enough to make the doctor that you're counting on to help you a racist copy of pain medicine he's talking about two milligrams of like one iv shot and so the nurse she literally just butted in she was like listen she was, she was like don't you see that this girl is in pain she was like the records say that she's taken this before i looked at her records you haven't even looked at her record the doctor was white and the nurse was also white when she was talking to him he was looking at her in her eyes he was he seemed more receptive receptive to her telling my story than me telling my own story <laughs> wow so after that he would just say okay fine order it from the pharmacy and see if they approve it she was like you know that they're going to approve it me and my mom and my sister had been crying, talking to him for like the past 30 minutes. Oh and she God. talked to him for maybe like five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he approved it even unwillingly and just walked out of the room and she was able to give me the medicine. Well, I'm so sorry that you've had to go through that. It's not normal. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press X to, no, you know what, something like that probably did happen, but these people, they see the racist boogeyman around every corner. And as I understand it, I think she was just asking for more drugs, right? So the doctor didn't believe she was in excruciating pain and she wanted more drugs than he was ready to prescribe, which is a little fishy anyways. But on top of all that, he's also a racist. Stone cold racist. Bye, Avil. Normal. It is common and it is not normal. So Dr. Uche, after hearing all of these experiences, what do you think this tells us about the state of the medical system as we know it. Yeah, this tells us clearly that our healthcare system is in dire straits. No, it doesn't. It literally doesn't say any of that. Right? Like these anecdotal stories about some weirdo race baiters that you found doesn't tell us anything about the medical I mean, they're already bowing to your every whim. The medical like industry at large was pushing pushing force form, you know, was forcing pharmaceuticals on people and telling you that a mask really works even though if you put on a blue mask and fart in your car i guarantee you're gonna smell it right these are the same people that are telling you to to snip snip your kids kaiser permanente i mean w Pe all of these people they're completely compromised and these these handful of questionable people says nothing about the medical industry which is already completely compromised and it's it's broken so we have to do work on an educational level, on a protocol level within hospitals and healthcare institutions, and think about strategies for increasing diversity among health professionals. Oh, it needs more diversity. Oh my, this is crazy. What? Mm -hmm. We are not anti-doctor. No. None of us up here no, are anti-doctor. <laughs> we recognize that doctors have a essential place in our society. What we are acknowledging is that the system in which doctors work is broken it's sick it needs healing it needs this is insane it's help so exactly. that doc so i she i guess basically what she's really just saying is that we need to make sure that every single doctor in the country is indoctrinated by our weirdo race baiting agenda otherwise we just won't be what what are you even talking about what needs to Doctors can do what they were put there to do, which is care for people like us. Absolutely. With that, I'll just say, I think, you know, with all of us coming together, I think it's an indication that if we continue to work at this. This, this could, I mean, this genuinely couldn't. And I get it. Like, they obviously paid these people and have, like, a cute little roundtable. But this couldn't be 
any more phone. Everything is just completely phony. Why is there not? Why nobody seems to just shoot it from the hip? Well, okay, I shouldn't say nobody. Obviously, that's not true. There's loads of people who are telling the truth. But all of this weirdo plastic pharmaceutical political stuff is really just creepy. The day will come when pain and equity will be a thing of the past. I believe that. I believe it's possible in our lifetime, but we can't we can't silence ourselves and we can't give up the fight. So Dr. Uche, Derek, Mark, Deirdre, Anaya, Eticia, thank you so much for being here. Wow, that's absolutely insane. So the medical industry needs to change at large, which it does, but not in the way that they're saying. But either way, buy Advil.